Hi, I'm Dexter at Finders Fair in Beaumont, Texas, and I want to introduce you to a local artist, Ian Sebastian Grice, whom we're going to feature at the first Thursday here at the Mildred Building in our gallery in December. Welcome, Ian. Hi. We've got some of your art here surrounding us that's going to be on display, and I'd like to kind of ask you some questions about where some of this stuff comes from and what it means to you and, and uh, how it evolved. Do you mind? No. All right. This painting over your right shoulder, mm -hmm. what do you call that? Uh, that is called... It's, un, it's untitled, really. It has no, no name. Uh, I made this piece. Uh, there was a girl uh, involved, and uh, she made me feel like I just needed to rip my heart out. Uh, so the symbolism of the heart and the spaces and the cold snow. Uh, and of course, he's still got his chin up walking with his head high. Um, but with a broken heart. Well, with a, with, well, with a, with a heart. He just left it. He just kept walking. He didn't need it anymore. And the, the barbed wire around the edge is kind of symbolizing, you know, don't, don't touch me right now. I'm, yeah. I'm mending. I need space and you know he's in the vast emptiness and you know. now the way you've created bands of color with the gray snow and and the cobalt blue I guess that's the sky yes and and what are the um, the yellow orange shapes in the sky those are comets comets yes comets um flailing about through the sky. The comets uh, just seem a lot more profound to me than stars. Stars, you could look in the sky and see those on any day, but comets could symbolize how, how vicious this, this heartbreak was. So would you think uh, then that the, the overall feeling of the painting is one of hope or desperation? I would say the overall feeling is one of desperation overall, but maybe, you know, there's some hope in there because of his chin being held high. He's got, seems like he's trying to Make it seem like he's got something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. So. Like he's going, he's going on no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understanding what the artist had in mind when they painted something really helps in understanding what you're looking at and and, and the symbolism involved. And and I know a lot of times when I first look at a piece of art it will appeal to me or not appeal to me based on the colors and the, the, the proportions and, and the relationships in, within the painting, but um, there's always something deeper, there's something underneath that you wish you knew more about. So hearing it from you uh, brings that up to the surface where it's, it's a, way more interesting. There's a funny story, uh, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting story, it's not one of my greater moments, but this piece in particular, uh, there was a juror show, and uh, the lady involved with this this heart wrenching uh, episode um, was she was a, she was also an artist, and we both had work in the show, and. This was a very fresh piece by the time that show came about, and I was still in turmoil. And uh, I ended up taking that piece off of the studio wall. Uh, in the middle of the show, people walking around. And it was not a very uh, 
very good thing that 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 piece has a history, I guess, though. So it's very personal. It is a very yes, it's a very very personal piece, but it's a uh, it's got its it's got its own life now. You know, it, kind of like a it's a uh, well it's doing its thing. It's been calmed down since that, <laughs> since that time. <laughs> time. It's 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 it's, it's well, stayed this, in the this wall. This painting that's above us here is is bright and colorful, and, and when you first look at it, I mean, it, it to me it evokes a happiness and a. a but I'd like to know more about it. Um, um, what, what's behind this? This piece here is all scrappy. Um, it's called Scrappy. It's uh, this is just a fun piece. Uh, this is one of the first collages uh, that I had made and I had all these dominoes I had saved tossed in some drawer and I had these laser light pointers they're fun to me you know I remember when I was you know real young laser light pointers were just hours of fun <laughs> and yeah. so there's symbolism in that and then there's you know there's a little bit of work involved I, I found these electrical cords on a on a building that uh, that they were they were scrapped from a from a building at work and um, all of these paint chips inside these these legs here Oh, that's this, what all these colors are. All these colors are paint chips that are uh, they're from the first two years of me painting. I would scrape my palettes and um, and save them, and this is where they went. And the there's a smile in this <laughs> piece of metal here. I got it from the first hurricane that I uh, had ever gone through in my life, and I found it in the yard. Uh, when we got back and I kept it for about two years until it made it into this piece and um, this piece pulled off in a perfect circle to make an eye and that one had a nice dot and I had some, some key rings and it's just it's scrappy it's it's just a fun piece for me I even uh, carved out all these etchings in the frame and made the frame myself for it. Um, it's just a, a fun piece. Well, so when you the, when you started this, did you have something in mind or were you just had these things that meant had, something to you and wanted to? Yeah, I had all of these things that I've had just laying around and I wanted, you know, it's like a it's kind of like almost like a spring cleaning kind of feeling like I wanted to get rid of all these things but I didn't want to just throw them away and have them go to a dump because I you know I've had memories with these things and you know and uh, and I said well I could do something better than just throw them away so I started just kind of messing around and seeing what I could do and this is what I came up with um, so each of the pieces really meant something to you, whether it was the piece of metal that wound up as a smile. Yeah. I mean, most people would have not even picked it up, but maybe yeah. I would have picked it up as a souvenir of the terrible storm, but after a while I would have just pitched it. Right. And you, but you, if I, now, I don't know if I'm reading this right, but what I'm hearing is that you're taking these things that meant something to you, whether it was just fun, passing, or whatever, Mm -hmm. and you held on to them and then at at a certain point they kind of came together in a creation mm -hmm. yeah. so after you you did this like for instance this background what is that that is fabric dye and it but this is a this is all done on a on a wood uh, plank this is a piece of wood that I cut out um, and I'd stained the wood with this fabric dye because when I first came about building it, I had these legs and I 
I was like, ah, okay, I'll do a square and I'll keep it kind of square. And then I had all these colors in here and I felt like I didn't know what to do with this wood. So I had a bunch of these different fabric dyes and I just strung them all around in kind of a, a tie-dye sort of fashion so that it could kind of somewhat blend with this here and still keep all of these pieces that are in here, keep it, have it a, keep it a flow, you know? Well, it does. Um, keep it in flow and, and, and in an aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing, or yeah, aesthetically flowing, I guess. I don't know. Well, I Depends on the person, saying. I guess, with the, with the how, you, what you, colors are pleasing. Do you do one thing and then it tells you what has to happen next? Yes, um, because I'll place one thing, and I, the first thing that was placed here were these legs, and in fact, at first, I had them going out in a diagonal fashion towards the center, and then there was all this empty space over here, and I didn't know how to fill it in with the pieces that I had. So... I kind of just, I grabbed all the, I grab all of the pieces. I have a couple of different pieces where I'm doing the same sort of process. And it's, I have the pieces that I want to do something with that have my memories or mm -hmm. whatever is entailed with them. But I, I, I take them, I have a piece and I have a certain size space and I want to, and I just, I go with it. I, I wake up one morning, I know I have my pieces there, I have my, my frame there, I make my pot of coffee, I stare at all the pieces, I stare at the frame, <laughs> and I grab something and I put it over there and I, and I just oh. work it until, it, until it, it feels finished and complete to me. And that's, uh, that's well, the that, And that, that, when you said that, made me realize it must be very difficult or maybe it isn't for an artist not being an artist I don't know but to know that it's finished that is um, that is difficult it is very difficult I have a, a, a problem it 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 for me I feel like it comes in a in a stage in stages and I I've got the beginning stages where everything is just absolute chaos. There's no, there's no functioning with any of these different pieces. It's all just da. Ah, and, and then there's a middle section there where things are starting to look like they're making its form mm -hmm. and it's, it's on its way. And then there's that, that climax, kind of like in a really good book. There's that climax right there towards the end where you're like, Oh, this is almost finished, but I don't know. This piece might need to go over here. Or this piece, you know, might need to go over there. And and but then, you know, that like like most good stories, I think that they they end up having a happy ending. So yeah. and they and they end up in, you know, you you're either bawling, crying because it was <laughs> such a sad story, or you're sitting there laughing along, like and you know. And then sometimes there's those pieces where you're just stuck in suspense, like, like when the movie ends and you're like, well, what happens to this person? And <laughs> well, that can be, become part of the, the point. Yeah, so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you can use that. That's, that's, that's where I have a lot of the fun, is each piece, each piece has its own, its own ending, its own, mm. its own beginning and its own middle pieces and well now like on the, the the broken heart when you started that you knew the emotions that you had and what it was going to be but when you started this one did you know it was going to be so happy no i hadn't i hadn't i hadn't thought i got there kind of in the middle somewhere i found the happy cuz i had these rings and you know I was, well, I could maybe make this a, like a, like a 
like a, a tree trunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say branch, but I could make it like a tree trunk and I could maybe, you know, have this be the leaves on a tree or, you know, I could do that or I could do this, but then, you know, then it got messy when I started looking at all the other pieces and where they would go around if I was to make this tree and well, I and think this really, tie dyeing on the board it really pulls it all together and makes it makes it fantastic. It's just really a fun, happy piece. Now, this I know some people that don't know a lot about art. Like um, when when something's called mixed media, they're not sure what that means. This truly is mixed media. Isn't yes, it? <laughs> yes, yes. It's truly mixed media. Well, now, you've got a painting down here um, that I'm interested in. Yeah, this painting? Yes. Yeah, this what, is a... Um, um, this is a wedgie. This is a guy... Uh, he's picking his wedgie, and the girl he went to the beach that day with is sitting in her hand or two, ball mouth open and in shock, wondering, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually witnessing this. <laughs> and this is just uh now what is, is the uh, media plan. this is cork board or it's cork paper um i generally with the cork i generally do uh fire hydrants i've got a series of fire hydrants on they're all done on cork board surfaces and those are all done with um with scrap paints that are excess from paintings that I'm in the middle of working on. And before they dry, I get the fire hydrant. But that's not this. This is, uh, this came one morning. I, uh, I had this cork board and I wanted to paint. I had no idea what I was going to paint. Um, and so what I did is I put on a, a record uh, is one of my more favorite records and I started playing it and it actually started here with this line here across the front of his leg and then I had this other line here across the front of the other leg and then I started to do these lines here and those were all um, I don't know how you would say but they went along with the rhythm there's a word for that, but um, so I painted these lines in in my kind of depiction of rhythm and how I could paint a line along with the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And from that it grew, and I sat it down, and then I cooked myself breakfast, and because I didn't know what I was doing anymore, and then I looked back at it, and then I flipped it around and turned it upside down, and. And um, and then I said, oh, well, this could be a guy, and I could do this, and I could make it like a beach scene, and I could just make him pick his wedgie, because that's just kind of funny. I mean, you know, and how often does that happen when you get out of the <laughs> pool or you get out of the water and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, pull, you gotta pull your pants out, you know? Well, now, you said it could be, you know, when you started looking at it, that it could be this. Could it have been anything else? Uh, I think I think it could have been lots of different things. It ended up here. Now, why is the the, the sky orange? That's my favorite time of day, morning and uh, sunrise and sunset, when the sun is just rising and the glow of everything is gold. Mm -hmm. There's a golden glow on your lawn you know three o'clock in the afternoon the sun is high and heavy and everything is bright and uh, yeah. in the morning and in the evening it's got yeah. that glow it's kind of a it's almost like to me it's the most comfortable part of the day um, because you're rising from and you just you know you're just rising from sleep and you've got a fresh day and yeah. and it's easy to work itself into and then at night you can look back at the 
the great day you've had, and and you can wind yeah. yourself back into sleep. And this. So does this one have a title? Uh, the Wedgie is the title. It's a this is a comical piece. <laughs> now, is it comical. oil paint or acrylic? Or? Uh, this is acrylic, acrylic on cork. I'm not. Uh, I haven't gotten too far into oil painting. Uh, too. Well, so I know some artists yet. like the acrylic because it lets them work faster. Yes, that's that's yes, and that's that's true for me because. When, especially when I'm doing something like this, and I start just to paint with the music, you know, sometimes the music will have, or at least I see it in this way, is music will have these rushes, and things will get really tense, and come to these peaks, kind of like in a sound wave. They'll come to these mm -hmm. peaks, and then they'll slow back down, and I have to have my paint and my brush at the ready, you know? So when it hits that yeah. peak, I can ride yeah. ride the peak with it and then even come that. back down and and that's that's how I um, I get around to to making this this here. And then uh -huh. just uh I, you know, I I think I had been going through a big a big phase where I was I was making some more serious pieces and some more some things that had just a lot of real personal uh, things going on, sort of like this one. But uh, and this was just a nice break for me, you know. I still mm -hmm. wanted to be able to create, and mm -hmm. I still wanted to do something. And it just it's kind of you know I had been serious enough for a while with all of my paintings and everything, and I just needed to let loose and crack a joke. You know, <laughs> so you yeah. find you're able to paint both when you're really sad and happy. Mm hmm Yeah, that's interesting. Yes, uh, I I feel like if uh, if if I'm lucky enough to leave a legacy behind me one day, I, I you know I would I would think that because when I think about what what gives me such a drive anyway when I go to make art is I do hope that you know one day, when I'm when I'm dead and gone, my pieces are still looked at and 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 being tossed around the world, even with me not being <laughs> here, you know. Um, and so I forgot what we were <laughs> saying, but well, but, I, was, um, I was asking that you can paint in different moods. Yes, yes, right, 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 right. right. So the life storyline. I don't want. People to have to look at my work and see, wow, this guy was really sad, or this guy was just—he was just super happy. You know, I'd like you to be able to look at my work as an image of me and see, you know, that I'm—I'm I'm a human and I have <laughs> different crazy wild emotions and I—I want to laugh and I want to cry and rip my heart out and I just want to piddle around with stuff. You know, and all right. Now I noticed and, on the on the before we go to the next one, I wanted to ask you about your signature. Ah, that 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 took a that took a couple of years to get to get down. There's a lot of pieces I don't have signatures on, but then once I found it, that's it. And my signature is is an S is the giant squiggle, and an I is the dot, the dot makes the I in the S, and then there's a G in that bottom part of the S, and I can see it if you flip it upside down. Oh, it's like upside down and backwards. Yeah, it's upside mm -hmm. down and vertical, and, and um, but it's my initials, mm -hmm. ISG, Ian Sebastian Grice. Right. And it's, uh, now, is that a number at the end? That's 13. That's for the year that it was, uh, oh, it was painted. Oh, all right. I Makes tried. a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, a cipher, or like uh, like the the Chinese artists use a chop mark. It's almost like a combination of your letters, but done in an artistic way. Right, and I uh, I wanted to have a good emblem because I, I was signing my name, Ian Sebastian or Ian Grice or just Ian, and in the year, and I said this is just not. This just 
doesn't look right to me. You know, I see some people that write their name on their paintings and, you know, I say, okay, well, this is, you know, this is good. But I wanted to something, just a, just a kind of an emblem. Yeah. You know, so that you could look at it even if you didn't know who I was, you couldn't stick a name to me. You mm -hmm. could stick this emblem, and I, to me that's just a little more entrancing, and it, you know, it's caused more cause for speculation. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and, more interest. Yeah. yeah, more interest and more wonder. Well, let me ask you about this last piece. This is kind of interesting here with all these things sticking out of it. <laughs> Tell me about this. Um, this is screws and nails and it's just on a piece of scrap wood it's uh this is a piece that, that i had an idea for when i i think I, just watching an older couple you know that's kind of in the middle age and they're probably i don't know midlife crisis or something like that and this is a uh, my representation of what a man would do when he's just sick and tired of his wife and can't do anything but just go to the garage and just start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. He's not really going to be doing anything in particular, <laughs> but he is doing stuff. And that's, and that's, you know, that's just what I imagine that frustration would lead a man to do who's just <laughs> at his last leg and doesn't, you know. <laughs> I'm just going to go start hammering nails into a piece of wood and because I'm angry and I don't know what else to do right now. <laughs> now, all of these nails and screws, were those things that you had just gathered up yourself and saved away? Uh, no, actually, um, Chelsea had uh, had these, and uh, I have a few, but these were all hers, which I think is kind of interesting to How me. did she feel about you confiscating her her? I think Stash she was of nails and screws. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, I don't think she was so mad. Uh, I think <laughs> she was at the time I was making this. She was busy doing girl stuff like putting on makeup. So I, <laughs> this is this is the fun part about this one. This came about. I had the idea, and it really came together for me at a at a really nice yeah. time. I was doing boy stuff, and she was doing girl stuff, mm -hmm. and it's. Uh, one of those things, and and um, that's that's also what that kind of added to me, added it, you know, that a girl would be the one that provides the <laughs> the screws and the nails, yeah. and I'd just be the dumb guy that <laughs> would sit ironic. there and just put it in the. <laughs> so. Well, uh, we're going to have the first Thursday will be on December the fifth, I believe. Mm -hmm. and here in the Mildred building and and that's the night that all the shops here in the building are open late and we're going to have your things on display these and other things and they'll be here that night for the opening and then we'll have them here for the rest of the month right. so i hope that you all will come by and and meet ian that evening and and get to know him and see some of his work and we we just like to have you come by and visit Thank you very much.